You know who you are. Turn yourself in. Turn yourself in. Don't make them come get you. Turn yourself in and let it go. Look, you ain't learned yet. It's raining. Look, take me home. <laughs> <laughs> this man still trying to speak. It's raining outside, y'all. He's still trying to speak. Look. Oh, gonna take me home. <laughs> For real, you not about to kill me and the baby. <laughs> Why are you trying to take all this wet outside, baby? You can only get there so fast. You know what? I gotta become rich. I gotta buy my baby a helicopter, y'all, because he don't like stopping in lights. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> He don't get that stop signs, cause baby on go. <laughs> For real, I gotta buy my baby a jet or something. He do not like the way at these lights. He don't like the way that the lights. He don't like to stop at stop signs. He be going around traffic. This man, he has to be stopped. He, she somebody just stop. got, <laughs> no, but no, you need a greater force than that. He has to be stopped. Somebody hit, stop him. He has to be stopped. This is ridiculous. I'm not gonna live past 25. I'm not gonna make it. Not like this. Oh no. I might as well pray every day. Make sure I make it into heaven. Even though I do that anyway. But I don't know what I was getting myself into. This is the story of 24-year-old Sade Dixon, a mother of two who was two months pregnant, who recently ended a relationship with her boyfriend of three months and father of her unborn child, 41-year-old Markeith Lloyd. Markeith was an ex-con with prior convictions for battery, violently resisting arrest, and drug dealing. The two would break up, and Sade's fateful decision to allow him to meet with her just to have a conversation would end in a horrific crime that would leave her and her unborn child dead, her brother critically wounded, two police officers dead, and a community shocked and devastated. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Lockhart, Florida. 24-year-old Sade Dixon, a determined and ambitious woman, aspired for success and a better life for her family. She sought to obtain her real estate license to better provide for her two children, and she hoped to be able to retire her parents one day. However, her path crossed with a man who was 17 years older than her, 41-year-old Markeith Lloyd. Markeith had a troubled past, marked by arrests and violent tendencies. Against the advice of those who cared for her, Shaw Day became involved with Markeith. The couple had a tumultuous relationship. Problems started to arise, and she ended up moving back in with her mom to find comfort and safety. She didn't explain the exact reason for moving back in with her family, but she did mention that she had a physical altercation with Markeith. During the fight, Markeith bit Sade on the back, which resulted in her needing to visit a doctor to receive a tetanus shot. The couple had only been dating for about three months, and throughout that period, Markeith had the opportunity to meet Sade's family on several occasions and even ate dinner with them. Additionally, Sade was approximately two months pregnant with Markeith's child. On a fateful night on December 13, 2016, just three days after Sade moved back home with her parents, Markeith drove to Sade's mother's home to speak with his pregnant ex-girlfriend. Reluctantly, Sade agreed to talk with him. Little did she know that this encounter would turn into a nightmare. Outside the home, Sade and Markeith engaged in a heated conversation. Meanwhile, her brothers, Dominic Daniels and Ronald Stewart, heard some arguing and became concerned. Stewart decided to go and check on his sister. As tensions escalated, Markeith's true nature revealed itself. He coldly pulled out a firearm, unleashing a barrage of bullets that struck both Sade Dixon and her brother Ronald Stewart. Dominic and his mother, Stephanie Dixon Daniels, heard the sound of gunshots and rushed to the front door. To their horror, they discovered Sade and Ronald lying on the ground, both suffering from gunshot wounds, both fighting for their lives. Markeith fled, making his way towards his vehicle that was parked on the street, while firing his gun back at Sade's mother and brother, who came to assist their loved ones. Fortunately, neither of them were hit by the gunshots. Markeith then fled the scene. The family called 911, but tragically, Sade was pronounced dead at 9.16 p.m., merely 13 minutes after the 911 call was made. Regrettably, her unborn child also did not survive. 
Meanwhile, Stewart was transported to Orlando Regional Medical Center in critical condition due to gunshot wounds in his chest that barely missed his spine, a shot to the right thigh and left thigh. In the aftermath of this horrifying crime, Stephanie Dixon Daniels, still covered in her children's blood, pleaded for justice. However, the path to justice was far from easy. People were afraid to cooperate with police, making it challenging for investigators to gather necessary information. Police issued a warrant for Markeith's arrest, but the public remained silent. Days turned into weeks, with Markeith avoiding capture. The manhunt for Markeith Lloyd intensified, with law enforcement agencies, including the U.S. Marshal's office, joining the search. Finally, a breakthrough came when a customer who was shopping at a local Walmart spotted Markeith. The customer alerted officer Deborah Clayton who was off-duty at the time and just happened to be shopping at the Walmart. Officer Clayton, aware of the urgency, called for backup, then confronted Markeith in the parking lot. A tense exchange followed, escalating into a deadly gunfight between them. Heart-wrenchingly, Officer Deborah Clayton fell victim to Markeith's relentless assault, and she was shot and fell to the ground. As a final act of cold-blooded murder, Markeith stood over Officer Clayton and delivered the final shot, callously shooting her while she lay defenseless on the ground. Witnessing this tragedy unfold, a bystander sprinted across the parking lot to Officer Clayton and witnessed Officer Clayton take her final breaths. Markeith managed to escape, leaving behind a grieving community and a fallen hero. The loss of Officer Deborah Clayton shook the city to its core. A woman dedicated to making a positive impact on the youth, her death was a devastating blow to the community she had served tirelessly for over 17 years. The manhunt for Markeith Lloyd intensified, with law enforcement agencies redoubling their efforts. The community remained on edge, schools were put on lockdown, and residents were urged to be vigilant. The pursuit of justice knew no bounds, with hundreds of officers and agencies working tirelessly to track down Markeith, a fugitive who had already proven his capacity for extreme violence. People in the community were really scared. Imagine having someone who is extremely violent, not afraid to kill a police officer, and known to carry weapons, and yet no one knows where he is. The message to the public was clear. Don't approach him because he's dangerous. If you see him, let us know immediately. The police were desperate for any clues that could lead them to capturing Markeith. To motivate people to come forward, the reward for information kept increasing, from $60,000 to $100,000, and then to $125,000. In just one day, they received over 300 tips, which is way more than what they usually get in a whole month. He had been on the run for five weeks until finally they found him in an abandoned house in the Carver Shores area. Most wanted man in Florida is waking up in a hospital this morning. Police captured Markeith Lloyd Tuesday night in Orlando. The chief says he resisted arrest and he's now being treated for minor injuries before they haul him off to jail. ABC Action News anchor Lindsay Logue has been following developments from Orlando. She joins us live now with uh, details on the arrest and also what is next in this case. Good morning, Lindsay. Dia, good morning to you. And he'd been on the run for nine days since the shooting of Orlando police officer Deborah Clayton and on the run more than a month since police say he shot and killed his pregnant ex-girlfriend. Markeith Lloyd will likely never be a free man again. He had very little to say to reporters who were waiting outside police headquarters last night. You can hear him there complaining that police beat him up during the arrest. You can see his, his face there was uh, bloodied and it's bandaged <laughs> at some point during uh, all of this. Police, along with sheriff's deputies and U.S. Marshals, surrounded an abandoned home Tuesday night in southwest Orlando. They've been tracking Lloyd's phone and they were able to zero in on his location through pings. The police chief says when Lloyd walked out of the house, he was wearing tactical gear and these were the guns in his hands, which he then dropped to the ground. It's been an intense few weeks in the Orlando area, but this morning fear and frustration have turned to thankfulness, especially for the victim's families. My daughter, she deserved justice. She really does deserve justice and I'm glad he's caught. I'm glad now I can ask him why, why? Why would you want to do this to our, our family and, sh and try to kill both of my babies? In a show of respect to the fallen officer, Clayton, her handcuffs were used to secure Lloyd during the arrest. Markeith faced serious charges, including two counts of first-degree murder, killing an unborn child, attempted murder, and resisting arrest. While he was being apprehended, four police officers hit and kicked him with their rifles, causing him to lose an eye. 
but after an investigation, it was determined that the officer's actions were justified and they didn't use excessive force. Disturbing details about Markeith's state of mind was revealed after he was captured. Shocking words from an accused killer. The Orlando Sentinel is reporting it's gotten a hold of the text messages Markeith Lloyd sent to his ex-girlfriend Sade Dixon moments after shooting her and her unborn baby. In those texts, Lloyd reportedly said, quote, don't know if you go make it, hope you don't, end quote. Records show hours later he texted her again saying, quote, you caused this and blamed Dixon's brother for intervening. Her brother was also shot. The Sentinel also reports investigators found a 10-page letter inside this house on Lascott Lane where police found Lloyd hiding the night of January 17th. Investigators believe that letter gave a detailed account of why he shot Dixon. They also say he called killing their unborn child a, quote, unintended consequence. The story you'll see only on Channel 9. And I'm going to be Accused cop killer Markeith Lloyd is revealing for the first time what he did during a massive manhunt to put him behind bars. Now, I was there on a bike. You heard him right. In plain sight, that's where Markeith Lloyd says he spent his days on the run last year. And his daughter and her mother claim they would have helped him hide if he'd shown up at their door all week. Keith Lloyd told one of his daughters and her mom he deserves some money. We're blurring the daughter because we believe she's underage. Write me a book. Write you one. Write you one. Give me money. Everybody else, I get paid off my damn name. Let me use my own damn name. Ever since Lloyd's ex girlfriend, Sade Dixon, her unborn baby, and Orlando Police Lieutenant Deborah Clayton were murdered, Lloyd's alleged involvement in the deaths has certainly brought him name recognition. Before he became a worldwide superstar in his head, Lloyd claims he was ready to kick Dixon and his own baby to the curb. She was texting me stuff like, you, you, you lied me to my two more family with me. I'm, I'm, I'm get your baby. It never came to that because Dixon died and Lloyd went on the run. I've told you before, Lloyd admits he shot Sade Dixon, but he's always claimed he was provoked. Every version of the accused killer's story finds a way to blame whatever happened on someone else. Markeith was found guilty for the murder of Sade Dixon and her unborn child and was sentenced to life in prison. Two years after Markeith had been sentenced for the murder of Sade Dixon, he stood trial for the killing of police Lieutenant Deborah Clayton. Never before seen video is shedding new light on the dark moments before the huge manhunt for Markeith Lloyd. The footage takes us back to the Walmart on Princeton Avenue the morning of January 9th when Lieutenant Deborah Clayton lost her life. He looks like an unusual shopper, wearing a security sweatshirt and camo pants, but grocery shopping like anyone else. But prosecutors say this is a cold-blooded killer moments before he would kill again. Seen shopping at the Princeton Street Walmart for about 15 minutes before Orlando Police Lieutenant Deborah Clayton's SUV pulls in. A minute later, you see her grab a cart and walk into the Walmart at 7 a.m. on the dot. She heads to the produce aisle first, is there for a few minutes, while Markeith Lloyd is seen coming out of the bathroom at 7.04. For the next 10 minutes or so, the two are seen shopping, crossing paths every few minutes. This is Lieutenant Clayton walking past the cosmetic line at 7.09 a.m. Three minutes later, you see Lloyd walk by too. By now, Lieutenant Clayton was checking out, while Lloyd, who was in the same line as Clayton, decides to check out on the other side of the store. It was while he was in line to check out there, the most chilling moment occurred at 7.15 a.m. Watch closely as Lieutenant Clayton, on the way out of the Walmart and to work, 
walks right past Lloyd, checking out. Having no idea, less than three minutes later, she would be dead. The call coming in over the radio at 718, an officer was down. Markeith Floyd testified that he had killed Deborah Clayton in self-defense and claimed that the police were always pursuing him. The jury swiftly reached a verdict, finding Markeith guilty of first-degree murder of a law enforcement officer. Consequently, the judge sentenced him to death. The second officer, Orange County Sheriff's Deputy Norman Lewis, died while responding during the manhunt for Markeith Lloyd when his motorcycle was intercepted by an oncoming vehicle. What happened to Shaw Day Dixon was a tragedy. Her leaving a relationship that had turned violent should never have resulted in her death. My condolences to her friends and family. May you continue to heal and one day find peace. To the officers who gave their lives to get a dangerous man off the streets, I thank you for your service. We want to stop the violence in the community, but we need the community to speak up. Let us know what's going on so that we can try to intervene. We can't do anything without you all letting us know what's going on so that we can protect and save our children from violence. And we also, the police is here to help you. We're not here to hurt you, we're here to help you. And if you have any complaints, just follow up with the complaints. And believe me, we will look into them, okay? So don't give up on us despite everything you've seen on the news. We're here for you. So that was the reason for bringing the cops and the community together so we can start having a unity, building these relationships, and trusting each other. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.